Hi guys, and welcome back to Scale Molder. Today we're going to be starting a new build. Uh, this is the Tamiya 2005 YZRM1. We're going to be doing the Rossi bike, obviously, um, and I've got quite uh, quite a few bits to add. So I've got the Top Studio Super Detail set. Um, I've also got the Top Studio Chain set. Um, I'll do a separate video on how to kind of put the chain set together, and uh, we've also got the uh, the Tamiya front fork set. Um, so yeah, that it is. Um, it's going to be quite a quite an in-depth build. I'm going to 3D print a couple of bits and bobs for it, which aren't in the the detail set. Um, but we're going to start off um, just snipping bits from the sprue. Um, we've got we're going to be doing the frame. Uh, the swing arm and the engine in this video um, and the frame needs quite a bit of modifying um, the whole kind of front section here on top of the ram air duct we're just cutting off because uh, it's going to be uh, replicated by some resin parts in the super detail set so the instructions aren't super duper clear they just kind of show pictures of, of what's needed um, and what you need to do um, as you can see here it just shows cut this bit off it doesn't show which bits to leave or, or, or anything like that so we're just going to chop it off um, and hope for the best now the swing arm also needed quite a bit of modifying um, as you can see there so the chain adjusters at the back needed to be completely cut off um, and I've done this before on one or two kits and it is it is quite annoying getting in there and uh, sanding everything out um, I've not found an excellent way to do it yet um, uh, the best way I've found is just to chop the back off which we've done here um, and then I like to come in with the uh, UMP customizable sanders. I'm using a blunt knife to cut them. They're normally super duper easy to cut. Just this knife was terrible. It's a blade that's been on there for ages. But essentially it's just a plastic backed piece of um, of sandpaper um, which you can trim to any shape or size you need and what I've done is I cut this to the uh, the width of the gap for the chain adjusters and then uh, I went through the various grades just sanding away. Now I did use uh, a blade to cut away as much as I could first. You've got to be quite careful because you don't want to catch the sides with the blade because that can leave some indentations and stuff which uh, which will be really noticeable especially if, if it's being looked at closely which I assume it will be when people are adding the super detail set because why would you want to add all these little tiny details if nobody's got to look at them? So, yeah, we're just going to use the, the customizables for that. So next up, I, on a whim, decided I was going to fill the gaps in the chassis and the swing up. It was quite simple to do. Um, I probably could have executed it better. But all we've done is we've got some very thin sheet styrene. I can't remember the the measurement for the thickness, unfortunately. But we're just going to hold it up against uh, the back side. We're just going to draw around it with a pencil. And then what we end up doing is we just cut that with our knife. And, uh, and then we use a bit of that uh, extra thin, the Tamiya extra thin, you can see sitting there in the back there. And uh, I'll stick it where it needs to go. And you can see just applying a bit of pressure just so it keeps the shape it needs to and then we're just going to hold it in place. The thin styrene is, is quite, uh, quite bendy so it, you don't have to kind of hold it for days or, or you know leave clamps on it for hours it'll stick and, and keep its shape and then we're just going to come in with a knife and cut away any excess being careful again not to gouge the swing arm because that would require so more filling and more weighting and we've done the same on both sides the other side was a little bit more in 
involved because there was a, a gap in the swing arm for the chain to come through. But we used the exact same method using the pencil to mark out what needs to be cut and then just coming in and cleaning up with a knife as we're doing here. And then later on we went and uh, we just sanded just to make it nice and smooth. Next we are using the Tamiya White Putty um, and we're using this to fill the, the frame. Um, I could have used the styrene method but it would have just required a lot of patching and stuff to get as accurate as I wanted so we decided to use the putty in the end. We did use a bit of this on the swing arm as you can see in the back um, just to kind of fill the gaps and um, get any parts we may have missed with the styrene. I was using an old dull blade to kind of get it nice and smooth with the raised surfaces on the edge and then just went nuts with the filler and filled all of the gaps in the, in the back of the frame. I'm still getting used to this camera angle so sometimes I do go out of shot again, I am sorry for that. But essentially all we've done is just grab the load from the, the tube and just packed it in there with a toothpick. And while we're waiting for that to dry, we're going to go ahead and stick the engine together. Now the part's been cut off the sprue, I haven't showed the cutting and cleaning because everyone has their own kind of little method um, and their own kind of ritual for cutting and, and cleaning parts off the sprue. Um, so I done mine. I cut the parts off and I cleaned them up while I was sitting here um, and I would either be in a hangout um, or my girlfriend would be behind me on the computer and you know we'd just be chatting um, so yeah I don't, generally don't film that stuff anymore but super simple um, just gonna cut the parts off put, hold them where they need to be and run some Tamiya extra thin along the seams give it a little squeeze and you should get a nice, um, a nice consistent join. You can tell it was a nice, uh, nice join by just how tough it was to get that part to sit in nicely. Um, I like putting it all together while it's still drying because then it kind of pulls itself square, if you will. Um, but we're going to go along the inside with the time you're extra thin here, just so lessen the chance of anything bleeding out and getting gluey fingerprints everywhere. Some parts like that I couldn't really get to from the inside so just be careful and just, just kind of remember where you've put the glue and try and avoid putting your fingers in it. squeeze it all together to try and eliminate as many kind of gaps as we can. And there we go, now we're back with our filler and it's it's set. Um, so we're going to come in and, uh, and sand away. Um, so I'm using the UMP uh, thinny stick sanders for this just to get in all the little areas and uh, because they're nice and thin and the, the profile of the frame, it's got a nice curve to it. I didn't want to use a, 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 lot, a big flat surface because I'd end up flattening off that curve. So I'm just using the thin side. And for any stubborn bits of filler, you can use a lacquer thinner. Uh, yep, yeah, a lacquer thinner, sorry. This is a MLT, Mr. Leveling Thinner, and I've just got it on a Tamiya pointed cotton bud. I'm just gonna use that to remove any kind of any stubborn bits of filler or any that's kind of in places where it doesn't need to be. Now I could have sanded these little bits of filler away, but I didn't want to risk kind of reprofiling the parts and 
the buffet up and leaving scratches, so so we thought we'd give the uh, the thinner a go. So now we're done with that, we're going to start on painting, and of course we're going to start with primer, and I'm using the UMP Gloss Black Primer yet again. Um, my all-time favourite primer, um, I say all-time, like I've tried loads and loads and loads, but this is the best I've used so far, and it does the job, so I'm sticking with it. Um, and we're going to be spraying it through the Ultimate Apex Airbrush, with a 0.35 needle. No idea what pressure I'm using, because I've got a cheap electric compressor. Um, so just, just kind of play um, and see what works best for you. Now, I, at this point I was in a kind of autopilot. Normally I, I build up the layers of primer uh, a lot slower than this. And for some reason I just went a bit crazy. Um, I'm not sure why, but in the end it turned out fine. Um, I still would suggest building up the coats slowly um, just because that way you know you're gonna get a better finish with this it was it was a bit of a risk and again like I said I'm not sure why I went so crazy um, but we got it on there um, I like to do like a small kind of dusty coat I think the reason I was going a little thicker um, at least on the engine was because I wanted a super duper glossy finish because I wasn't going to put a gloss black coat on before the metallic paints like I normally do. Um, I'm not sure why, um, I just thought I'd see how glossy I could get this and it turned out really really nice um, with the, the metal paint over the top. But they're all going to be uh, primed, everything done so far is going to be primed in the same way. Um, the smaller parts I did go a little thinner on just because I didn't want to lose any detail in the part. And then next up we are on to painting the engine. Uh, we're going to start off with Alclad Chrome um, and this is going to be sprayed. Normally I, I spray it nice and thin uh, at a low pressure. I am at a low pressure now um, but I'm going a little thicker because I don't want that stark super shiny kind of deep chrome. Um, because that's that's just not what the engine block is. Um, it is a, a shiny chrome, but it's more of a machined chrome. So I'm kind of going for that effect. So I'm, I'm laying it on a little thicker. Um, and with the Alcard, I've noticed that if you do that, I seem to get a a kind of less deep, less rich chrome effect, but I still get a nice shiny metal effect. final coat there I think we've done four in total and as you can see you've got that nice shiny metal look but not that deep deep curl next up we're on to Alclad Gold Titanium and there's a couple of bits and bobs which need to be painted with this um, mainly the cam cover or the rocker cover whatever it is you want to call it um, it has a slight like gold tinge to it, the Alclad Chrome. Uh, we're going to be spraying it, uh, sorry, the gold titanium. We're spraying it the same as the Alclad Chrome. Um, just a little thicker, I find that with the gold titanium, the gold comes out a little bit more if you go a little bit thicker. Um, I'll just check in to make sure what bits are what colour. gold titanium, titanium is, uh, is a really really nice color next up I believe oh no never mind we are going with the polished brass and this is one of my favorite colors from Alclad um, it's a really really nice gold color um, and we're going to be using this for the clutch this I kind of applied thin but I didn't kind of leave much time between coats now I'm not saying that this is the best way to do it, not at all, it just works for me. Um, so next up we are using Dull Aluminium from Alclad. Uh, this 
again is applied quite thin and we're building it up in um, in about three or four layers or coats we ended up with now normally I would mask off the engine um, however after looking at the uh, the way the frame sits and the way like all the detail stuff sits you're not gonna see a lot of the top of the engine so instead of masking I thought I would try and get some accurate painting uh, with the airbrush um, now I'm applying it very 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 thin and very slowly um, just to kind of see where I'm going with the paint and just to not go past that line on the engine I would suggest masking it up uh, it just seems I got quite lazy and again we've done the same with the alcohol steel which is for the main cylinder uh, sorry the cylinder head uh, the main cylinder was the um, the dull aluminium I mean we've done the same as the dull aluminium we're just gonna kind of slowly apply it until we get up to the line um, so I, <laughs> I done it this way at first out of sheer laziness I'm not gonna lie um, just because it is a pain to mask these engines up um, and I thought if I'm gonna have to mask it well, I'm gonna try this first um, because if it goes wrong I can just mask it and paint it correctly um, but yeah it, it didn't turn out bad um, in my eyes you can't really see much of the de uh, demarcation you can't really see the gaps between uh, I'll do those parts uh, for a different project so I'm just gonna take a quick look at the uh, at the parts here but all in all um, I was happy with the result um, we're gonna take a look at the parts here with a bit of panel like that you can't really see the the kind of the blended areas or the, the parts between the different coats of paint on the cylinder so I was quite pleased with that and um, I would suggest masking it up though um, 100% uh, you will all you know that way you're gonna get a nice finish and next up we're gonna paint the frame in X18 semi gloss black I was gonna leave it in the primer color but because I went a bit thicker it was a bit too glossy um, and it, it, it looked out of place so we went with the semi gloss black um, there's a couple of engine parts which needed the semi gloss black as well um, so we went in and got those two now this is thinned with Mr. Leveling Thinner from Mr. Hobby and it's thinned about 6040 um, I mean I started off at about 6040 and then just kind of done it by eye um, but I would start at 6040 and then add more thinner if needed but we applied this um, in I think we ended up with four coats um, and starting off thin and just building them up slowly until we get the kind of look we're after So next up we're doing some detail painting um, and I'm not entirely sure what this part is um, but it's on most of the GP bikes so um, I know that this is either a coolant or a hydraulic fitting um, I believe it's hydraulic and it might be for the gear system um, but again not certain so we're going to be painting up the A&N fittings basically um, so we're just using clear blue over a silver um, silver base on these parts um, and this is the Tamiya clear blue which is X23 um, and it's straight out of the bottle there is some thinner knocking about in the bottle because when I paint I thin the paints and then if there's any left over it goes straight back in the bottle um, so there'll be a bit of uh, Mr. Level and thinner knocking about in there um, I found if you do Want to brush paint it a drip or two of uh, mr level and thinner in the lid will help it brush paint nicer because it can be quite a sticky paint uh, and the same with the the clear red um, exactly the same um, straight out of the the bottle with 
however much thinner that's knocking about a couple of drops in the cap will always always help me brush painting the um, the clear colors and pretty much any uh, any time you color I like to put a little drop in the cap done with that a little bit more detail painting next um, so there's that circle on the engine there which I painted with a clear orange and yellow um, first of all I went in with the clear yellow and it was a bit too bright so I put some clear orange over the top um, and now we are just using Tamiya semi gloss black x18 yet again to, um, to paint the oil filler cap Next up, we're just painting the bolt in the middle of the clutch. Um, we're just using Tamiya LP11, which is silver. And I was, I could have used the, like a, a chrome paint marker or something along those lines. But we're going over the top with, um, with a clear red. So I didn't want to use the, uh, the paint pens just because sometimes when you go over the top, it can just, ruin the chrome effect or, or just pull the paint and, and move the paint so so we went with brush painting it it was a little bit of a nightmare because there's a small flange at the bottom of the bolt which needs to be painted as well um, but if you're careful you should be able to do it There we go, got that done, lovely. So now we're just putting the engine together. Um, we're using the um, Rocket CA gel. Um, really good super glue, I use it for pretty much everything. Um, I was previously using kind of Wilco brand for 15 in a pack for a quid super glue, um, but that just didn't kind of work out well. So. Uh, I started buying this super glue and I haven't needed anything else since it does all the jobs I needed to. So I had a bit of an issue with a cocktail stick. It got stuck in the part. Um, I was a bit too careless, shall we say, when I uh, when I stuck it on. Um, so yeah, the the end of the cocktail stick got stuck in the part and it wouldn't fit properly. I, I think it's an oil pump, maybe, um, but anyway, it wouldn't fit. So I had to do some gouging and cutting and ripping, um, but we got it out in the end and we got it to stick. Things like this are kind of the main reason I like to test fit the parts, fit the painted parts first before I actually go ahead and stick everything together. Just because if I had popped some glue on there, popped the part on, and it was squiff or it didn't win properly, then I would have had even bigger issues because I would have had to pull it off and then pull some paint off or yeah. Always better, it takes a second or two to check as well, just test fit.
again we made sure we test fitted the part there was a little bit which needed snipping so we snipped it off and it's good to go this the clutch basket um, due to the layers and layers of paint we had put on um, it squeezed on with a pressure fit very very nicely so I didn't bother popping it back off and putting any glue on because we didn't really need to because it stayed on quite nice I don't think it's an oil, it's definitely not an oil cooler, it's an oil pump. It's an oil something, or it could be a water pump. It's definitely something, but <laughs> we made a fit in the end. Pop on the throttle bodies and make sure we get them the right way around because there's because uh, the, the throttle cables do link up and we just want to make sure we've got them the right side. So all in all, I think I, I, I think I preferred the engine and the detail set for the 2004 model. Um, there seemed to be quite a bit more for the engine in the detail set and the actual kit parts seemed better. Um, Maybe not better, just see more detail, it looked like there was more going on. Uh, so we're probably going to end up building another 2004 bike. But I'm just checking through, this uh, This is just a PE sheet, uh, MotoGP generic stuff from Top Studio. I'm just looking at the various different sized bolt heads, deciding what we're going to use for the clutch. Now with these I found loosening them from the back, just poking them with the blade and then just popping your finger on top should pull them off nicely. Um, you can just kind of pry them up with the blade but I've I've pinged quite a few across the bench doing that and you want to make sure you're not doing that because they will run out pretty quickly. I've also seen other people on YouTube just picking them straight up with a pair of tweezers and I, I'm too scared to try something like that. I'm sorry, I keep adjusting my camera. Yeah, I'm too scared to pick them up with the tweezers, he says, as he picks them up with the tweezers, um, straight off the, the PE fret because, yeah, knowing my luck, I'll fling them across the bench and I'll lose them and they'll end up in my eye or stuck to a different model. So... <laughs> So yeah, we'll stick with the, the poking off. Goodness me. Pick an angle. Okay. Anyway, we're just going to use a, a little tiny dab of CA with a cocktail stick. And then we're going to use another cocktail stick, which I've literally just dabbed on my tongue. So it's a little tiny bit moist. And then you can use this to pick up the PE bolt heads very very easily just make sure you don't get the cocktail sticks mixed up or don't do what I used to do and use one side to pick the parts up the other side for the glue because you will end up super gluing a cocktail stick to your lip or your tongue or yeah just use separate ones or use a PE placer um, like a wax pencil or something because <laughs> yeah that would be uh, Oh, Christ. I think I've adjusted my angle more times in this section of the video than I have since I've started making videos. It's 
speaking of angles let me know down in the comments what what your favorite kind of angle you've seen is um, I've got these kind of close-up ones here um, I've got the more overhead ones and I've got a kind of 45 degree angle but higher up um, so yeah which one which one do you prefer Okay, and now a bit more PE, we're moving on to the chain adjusters. Uh, there's just two plates on each side, which I added off camera. Um, they were super simple. Uh, you just dab a CA glue and pop them in. Um, and then again, these uh, these chain adjusters, these were very, very simple too. Um, it's, you can't mix up the sides because they're specific shapes. So we've just popped a dab of CA glue on the back where this connects. First of all, we test fit it. We're going to pop a dab of CA glue on the back here. Pop our PE chain adjuster on. Just push it into place with the tweezers to make sure this stuck down nicely. And then two tiny dabs of CA on the other side, making sure not to upscale the hole in the middle for the screw for the rear wheel also if you get them nice and small when you push down like this the the super glue is not gonna uh, bleed out of the edge um, because it is quite a bit of a nightmare to remove when parts are already stuck okay and next up we're just doing the um, rear paddock stand um, I guess they're not bobbins they're little frames um, so these are just little brackets so we can put the, the rear stand on the bike and there's two pieces and we've just again dabbed a tiny tiny bit of CA glue we've mounted them to a cocktail stick <clears throat> because there is a hole in one of them in both of them sorry and, uh, and that way we can center them nice and easily Just testing to make sure everything fits, nothing interferes, um, and we've got plenty of space. And then I'm just going to file away the um, little protruding piece of pieces of metal where the photo etch parts were connected to the fret. Um, I, I prefer the photo etch, which isn't actually connected to the fret, but it's uh, it seems it's few and far between. Um, luckily, the bolt heads and, and things aren't connected to the fret which is excellent news um, because it would be a nightmare cutting and trying to sand off the locating part uh, the the gates the sprue gate no the fret connectors or, or whatever uh, it would be a nightmare sanding them off on, on tiny tiny bolt heads and once you're done don't forget to throw it across the bench <sighs> I did have to reconnect that because it did fall off but next up we're gonna go around with the adding paint marker and all we're gonna be doing is not getting every single bolt head um, just because I like to use some PE and some uh, some of the chrome pen just because I think it adds a little bit of variation and it makes everything not look the same and we've got kind of screw heads here for that kind of frame protector um, where, the, where the chain goes over the top and they would just be really really tiny photo etch bolt, he uh, bolt heads so I decided to use this instead the the photo etch chain adjusters have been painted um, I did have to go back in with the airbrush because I decided, decided to add them after I painted it for some reason and now we're just going to add some photo etch bolt heads in various different places using the same method as before tiny bit of CA applied with a cocktail stick and then we're going to use the wet tip of a cocktail stick to pick up the, uh, the bolt heads one thing that I didn't really like about the the, the detail set 
um, unlike the detail set for the RC213V, this comes with this um, doesn't come with the bolts to go in the end of the chain adjusters, um, which is no big bother. Um, I can 3D print some um, to put in. Um, it would just be nice if they were included. Now there's a couple of decals to put on the the swing arm and one or two on the frame. And we're gonna attack these as we would any other decal. We're just gonna pop on a bit of micro set. Not too much. Um, I've just kind of wiped away some excess here. You can see it starts to dry rather quickly, but we just want a, a wet area to put the decal down onto. So the decal is sitting in some nice warm water now, just to dissolve the adhesive. I'm just gonna check to see if it moves. And we got a bit of movement, lovely. I'm just gonna grip it with some tweezers and pop it in place. Now to the right of me um, in this video, uh, <clears throat> sorry, to the right of me while I was recording this video, I did have um, some reference so I could see exactly where these were situated. Which is why you can see I can, I'll peel them off and put them back on just to make sure I get the angle right. And then we need some softener and I'm using for the first time the ultimate, um, the UMP decal set in solutions. Um, they're great, absolutely excellent. Um, they've got three different strengths. They've got normal, strong and extra strong and I jumped straight in with the strong here. Uh, just because I know these these Tamiya decals are, are generally really really good um, um, and they, they can handle some uh, some stronger stuff um, so yeah jumped straight in with the strong and just covered the decal with that setting solution and it should make it conform to the surface because it's a weld line which the decal goes over but yeah it should uh, that setting solution should make it um, make it conform to that very nicely and then we've done the same pretty much on the other side it was just a slight different angle and I'm just rolling out any excess decal solution just to make sure there's nothing left underneath I like to press down slightly and roll rather than wipe or rub because I don't want to move the decal or rip it or even worse, fold it on itself. Okay, um, now we are going to be putting it all together, really. Um, I'm using this iFixit toolkit um, just because I don't really like the Tamiya screwdrivers. Um, they, if, mm, yeah, they're not great. They're too small, they're too fiddly. I like to use this because the weight of the actual kind of driver does push the screw down enough to get it to bite which is uh, which is lovely so don't have to put any kind of excess force on the model you can see we added a decal to the frame there to go. I don't I don't um, tighten the the screws all the way down first off just because you can get some alignment problems by doing so. So I like to get all the screws in just so they've bitten into the holes of the uh, of the engine and then once they're all in and where they need to be then I'll go around and tighten them down I 
So I'd actually downloaded the instructions um, and I had my tablet to the right of me with the uh, with the instructions up. It just seems a bit easier than having this fold out piece of paper on the bench and flip flopping it everywhere. It's nice to have the tablet and I can just scroll up and down. There we have it. We're all put together. Um, we've got some PE bolt heads here and there. Got some PE sorted on the back. And yeah, we are all together. So that wraps up part one of the uh, YZR M1 2005. Um, super enjoyed building this. Um, I'm, I'm building other things alongside off camera as well just because I want another little project to do at the same time but I am really really loving this um, yeah, yeah I hope you are enjoying it as much as I am um, if you are please don't forget to like comment and subscribe but in the meantime thanks for watching have a great day and stay safe